Hey guys, what's up? Al from It's Android World here, and today I'm going to be doing a full ROM review and tutorial of a ROM that's actually faster than FastTest, SuperD, D-Wang, Cyanogen, pretty much every ROM out there right now. So of course, with any ROM there is, and any real, any video I make on this um, channel, you have to be rooted, and that's how it's going to stay. Um, I have the ENG SPL and the latest radio. I'm pretty sure at least the um, death SPL is required. I recommend the ENG SPL. And um, I have a SD card partitioned to EXT4 and FAT32 only. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here's the actual lock screen. Um, it's black. It's not the one from the Dark Star. It's a little bit bigger with way bigger text. I kind of like it. Tap menu to unlock and here we are. This is by far my favorite ROM I flashed, and it is my default ROM as of right now, and as of pretty much forever until, probably until there's a D-Wang update, I'd say I might switch back. When you first flash this ROM, you're not going to have data. What you're going to have to do is actually go into settings, you're going to go to wireless controls, you're going to go to mobile networks, and you're going to tap access point names, then you're going to tap menu, hit new APN, tap APN, and type in this code right here, which is EPC dot T Mobile dot com. So you're just gonna do that, and once you have that in, you'll you'll officially get data. Um, that's all you really have to do. So let's go ahead and go home. And once you do that, you will have data, like I just said. Again, this ROM is fully functional and blazing fast, and what's crazy is it does not even have the 10 megabyte RAM hack. One of the downfalls of this ROM for me, I don't know if it'll bother you, is that when I pull down the notification bar, it doesn't go down all the way. It kind of just leaves the space down on the bottom, and I think it looks ugly, personally. Um, I, I really hate that. But other than that, the notification bar is very sexy up on top where it says 3GT Mobile. Um, it's very transparent. looks really nice. The bar up here, of course, shows you what um, wireless networking you're connected to, your bat your signal strength, your battery, which is a nice little silver gradient battery, and the time. Pretty nice. The drawer is actually the Nexus-themed launcher. But what's cool about it is it has a little blue highlight when you put your trackball on it. Personally, I really like that. And you see when you scroll through apps, you have this really nice silver chromish bubble that goes around it. And you also get that on the home screen which is really nice. I really like that little highlight mask it has and I really like the theme of the power control widget right here. It's a little more sleek and streamlined because it doesn't have the line separating it. Now I'm overclocked and underclocked at 528 megahertz maximum and minimum so I'm gonna get the most speed out of my ROM and hopefully you guys do the same to speed it up. Now one thing you're no gonna know is that my ROM has five home screens right now but when you first get it it's not gonna have five home screens. You actually have to tap menu and hit more then hit extended and go to home screen and then amazingly you can actually set the number of home screens you want 9, 2, even all the way up to 10 so I like having 5 and I like having my default home screen the middle one which is 3 you can even change the tray launcher comms amount so that means when you actually launch open your application drawer you can actually have up to 10 icons in one little row all the way up to 10 which is pretty crazy I like having 5 once again and you just go home it'll stay black for a second and take you to the ROM and then there you go you just open up the application drawer there's gonna be a little bit of lag until it's finally started up and there it is and it's pretty crazy it's a really cool feature that you can actually set how many home screens you want let's go ahead and see the speed of this ROM let's go on tap messaging and as you can see it's just so fast and it does not even have the 10 megabyte RAM hack it's just it's naturally really fast and what makes it seem a little bit faster if you go into sound and display in your settings and put on the animation that just gives you a little bit more speed feel like it's just it's just so naturally fast go ahead and take a look at the Android market and one of my favorite things about this ROM is that well of course every single thing works and it's all nice and blue but it has the newest market icon which you guys know from all my videos I really like so that's really cool for me and again like I said everything all the highlighting is blue and the pop-ups I believe are black so it's just a really nice little feature 
And I'll also show you guys if I go back in the market and pull it down. Like I was saying, it doesn't go all the way down. So, you know, if that doesn't bother you as much at all as it bothers me, then I recommend this ROM. And I'm still sticking it with this ROM regardless. But yeah, uh, one of my favorite parts of this ROM actually is the wallpaper gallery. It actually has some really cool little images like this one, which is what I've been using. It's basically, I have a Mac computer and I love Macs as a computer. And even though I'm an Android lover, I still love Mac computers. So it kind of brings in the best of both worlds for me. And it also has this really funny Mario image where, like, Mario's high off shrooms or something with Yoshi or, a, uh, excuse me, a Koopa right there. So I just think that's kind of funny. And it actually looks really nice as a wallpaper. Like, it's, it looks like a really high quality image. So the wallpaper gallery is really nice. Um, now, it actually doesn't have as many eclair fillings as other ROMs because it's not the newest ROM there is right now. The calculator, you know, here's the dialer. So there are a lot of eclair fillings. It just, it's not as eclair -y as other ROMs out there, like the latest Cyanogen. And also, if I go into my widgets, the search widget is completely schemed and different. That's what it looks like. It's pretty interesting. And you just tap on it and you search. That's actually the default on-screen keyboard right there. It looks really nice, and it actually looks really cramped together, but it's actually a lot easier to type on. One thing that's going to make a t ton of my touch users incredibly happy is it comes with better terminal which is a terminal emulator yes with an on-screen keyboard so if I just type in free no 10 megabyte RAM hack and I can use the on-screen keyboard so that's just a full ROM review of the actual ROM let's go ahead and see how to get this ROM running on your phone you're gonna wanna unplug the USB door from the bottom of your phone and plug in the USB cable to the bottom Scroll down the ugly notification bar and tap USB connected and then hit mount and go to your computer. Alright guys, so now that we're here, go ahead and drag Super CSDI version 4 onto the root of your SD card. And that is actually going to be a 56.3 megabyte transfer. It's not too big at all. Um, it actually is a pretty big donor ROM. A lot of them are in the 30s or 40 megabytes. But this is by far my favorite ROM that I flashed on my phone ever. So it's definitely worth the space. And once it's done, just eject your phone from the computer and go back to your phone. Alright guys, and when it's done, go ahead and unplug the USB cable from the bottom and wait for the preparing SD card logo to pop up and go away. So now that it's gone, go ahead and power off your phone. One thing you'll notice is that it does not have the reboot option, so you just got to power it off and hit OK. And there's the black pop-ups I was telling you guys about. And once the phone is completely off, you're going to boot your phone into recovery by holding down home and power. So just hold down home and join in with power. And when your phone vibrates, you can actually let go of the actual keys. And that will boot you into recovery. And hopefully you have Amin Ra's latest 1.6.2 recovery image. And once you're completely in, um, you're going to just do the regular process, wipe and flash. So scroll down to wipe and do a full data wipe. Then go back, go to flash zip from SD card, and flash Super CSDI version 4. Alright guys, and when it's done, just hit reboot system now and let your phone boot up and sign in with your Google account. Alright guys, and when your phone boots up, you will have Super CSDI running on your phone, but you will not have data. You'll have signal, but you won't have data. So what you're going to do is go into settings, go into wireless controls, and go into mobile networks. Then hit access point names. Tap menu and hit new APN. Then tap on that digit that says APN. And you're going to type in epc.tmobile.com. That's epc.tmobile.com. You're just going to hit OK. Then hit home. You'll then see a little 3G logo flicker real fast. Let's go ahead and wait for that. And then you're just going to wait for it to show back up. It'll actually come right back. And there it is. You will officially be running Super CSDI version 4 perfectly on your phone. That's really all you guys need to know. So thanks for watching. Please rate this video 5 stars. Comment letting me know what you guys think of the ROM and if you'll be flashing it. And subscribe. And make sure you follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Android's World. And I'll see you guys later.